I guess this is a big question and a question that has to do with all of us coming onto this earth school. Are we truly free? We don't come from earth. We come here to go to school. We get to experience the opposite in vibration of love, which is fear. And fear manifests war and violence. This is a purging. And the choices are ultimately about surrendering to the highest will, the highest will of soul. We can all change this global story of what's playing out. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to feel free, live free, and truly be free, then do we have the Angel Abundance show for you. Today I'll be talking with Belinda Womack, best-selling author, teacher, and guide who was called into service by the Archangels over, is it now 30 years ago? Holy tamole! And has written one of the highest vibration books on freedom I've ever read, Angel Abundance. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about how we can overcome the tyranny inside and outside of ourselves and set ourselves free. So welcome back to the show, Belinda. Are you ready to shine? Yes, Michael. Yes. Woohoo! All right. Before, <laughs> all right. Before I even have any questions, it looks like we've got a special guest who is making an appearance. You went like this. That was your first woohoo. That was your first woohoo. Here is Auntie Belinda. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Angel Hana. Huh, are you? Hi. I know. Hi. Are you happy to see? Are you happy to see her? Yeah? Yeah. Do you have anything you want to say? Do you have anything you want to share? Uh, Whoa! She wants to say, choose love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what she said about that. She said, yeah, I do choose love. And at the... Yeah. And the start of this show is the first time she has ever woohooed. So <laughs> the first show today. Oh, you've got my prayer rock now, don't you? You do. You do. Is there anything else you want to share before we get started? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is the cutest shot ever. Do what makes you happy, right? Angel, yeah. <gasps> I would agree. She would agree completely. When she comes on air at the start, Belinda, I honestly have no idea what to say or what to do. It's just pure love and I'm done for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She does that. She's just such the love radiator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, her wings just like... <sighs> <laughs> she knows what she's doing. There, there she goes. She's, uh, wow. Oh my. <laughs> so do you want to join us for this show, Hannah Bear? Is that what you're thinking? Okay. You want to join us? So I have to ask a serious question. And how do I ask this serious question with you just glowing in my arms? I Oh, and you're going for the keyboard. We're going to try to avoid the keyboard because you might actually click the off key. <laughs> Not that you've ever done that before. So, all right, we're going to dive right into things. Hana Bear, do you want to ask the first question? No? Oh, I, I will then. We're going to spin you this way. <laughs> to the mic. All right, Belinda, and this and this certainly goes for for. Uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, oh! I know, I'm speechless. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely and totally speechless. So, I guess this is a big question, and a question that has to do with all of us coming onto this Earth School. Before we dive into things, Belinda, are we truly free? No, we're not free, but our souls are free. And the whole journey is to choose love. We're in school. We are in school. So we're here to let that freedom come in, to let the love set us free. But when we live from ego, no, that's right. Angel Hannah, we are not free because fear kind of can ruin and definitely rule our lives. Would you say then that the construct of this world is to have 
mm, in a sense, less freedom, at least temporarily, so that we shift and we learn and we grow. Sure, sure. That's a good way to put it. And that's one of the things that Archangel Michael teaches is that we need limits, right? We're in school. We are in school here. And so those limits help us to make choices. And the choices are ultimately about surrendering to the highest will, the highest will of soul and the highest will of heart. And that means to really tune into what makes us happy, but also what benefits right humanity and earth what's for the greatest good of all concern I have to tell you she's very entertaining back then. I can hear her <laughs> and i love every word she's saying and she's she she may well oh here she comes she's coming right back <laughs> this is the first she's coming right back I, I need to get like a seat here for her this is no longer it was never the michael show but this is no longer the inspire nation show this is this is the angel hana or hana bear show <laughs> this is clearly oh you're getting into your power now aren't you Yes. <laughs> Stepping into your I know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, and there goes there goes Rue in the background now. <laughs> yeah. She's a divine child. She's already so one with her divine inner child they're one and the same you have so much to teach us she's, so much i couldn't agree with that more and she's only this is hard to believe she's only 13 months so and she is clearly she passed babyhood a while ago and just kind of rocketed past it um and and you'll look at her and you'll go whoa <laughs> because all of a sudden she's looking through us and she knows us <laughs> Yeah, she knows. You can count on that. She can know. She, she knows everything and she'll bust your chops whenever you need it. Uh, yeah. I almost want to say amen, but I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> so we come to the Surah School. We cho choose to come to the Surah School. So why is it we keep giving our power away to leaders or the patriarchy or what you call old man and old woman energy? Well, so fear has appears to us in archetypes. This is the way the 12 archangels put it. And it's the old male yeah. and the old female. Okay. And so the old male is the controlling part of our ego, the judging part. It's what brings in those limits and pulls the vibration down of our ego. Mm -hmm. And the ego is the only part of us, as you well know, that can be separate from our heart and separate from soul. And then the old female, she's still fierce. She comes in with guilt and shame and blame and unworthiness, pulling our vibration down. And when our vibration is down, we give our power away to others that appear to have what we don't have, whether that's power, money, position, until we wake up, which is why we are in schoolroom earth is to say, now, wait a minute. If I'm in my heart, like Han, and I am in that joy, and I'm connected with what the angels call the divine inner child, which is heart, that gives us immunity from that patriarchal old male and from fear, because our vibration goes up. And then we have common sense, because we're connected with our intuition, our feminine brain, which is where intuition lives and creativity. It opens up, it connects us with source, yeah. but consciously. So then we know what to do. We know what our yes is and we know to say goodbye fear. Thank you. This is, this is really fascinating because there are some and we're going we're gonna to have you, if it's okay with you, channel the 12 archangels of the central sun in a little bit. Um, so for people who are wondering if we're going to be doing that, we will be. However, 
I have some very, it's a, it's a very interesting time, shall we say. We've got fires, we've got floods, we've got political fires, we've got political floods, we've got all sorts of things going on. We've got Stephen Greer and UFOs and UAPs and so many things taking place on the earth right now. And yet, when I hold Hannah Bear in my arms, or Angel Hannah as you call her, I can't ask a serious question. All of a sudden, there is just this glow, this love that comes over me, and I feel comes over you and probably comes over all of us at this time. And so all of a sudden, I'm like yanking the railroad, <laughs> the lever to try to get us back on the serious track. But maybe that's not where we belong, is it? No, Michael. We belong in the love and joy of the divine, and it's very real. And one of the things that the 12 archangels do teach, and again, their number is symbolic. It represents moving humanity upward in vibration, upward in evolution. Because from their perspective, we don't come from earth. We come here to go to school. And we get to experience the opposite in vibration of love, which is fear. And fear manifests war and violence and the old male patriarchy and control and racism and all those things that can be shocking when we live in our hearts and we live in oneness. But we can all change this global story of what's playing out. And we do that by being definitely more like Hana or connecting with our own divine child and joy. And this is real energy because we are made of energy and we're made of the energy of love. And when we plug into source, when we plug into that love, we raise our vibration out of illusion. But when we remember that each one of us is a cell and what the angels call the one human body or the human collective, yes, we can change the global movie for all concerned. The angels say that is happening. They say that what, we're, what we are experiencing with all of this incredible drama is the purging of fear the purging of the past, where we have avoided feeling our feelings and being real with ourselves. So we are going through different lessons because they're all about teaching us lessons, but the lesson, all lessons come home to love is a vibration Mm -hmm. and love is an energy that we can all tap into it's really coming home to because it's what we are made out of and it is the greater power it's the greatest power in all the great universe and it transforms fear and one more thing about fear that the angels because they're they're definitely here is that like our secret key Mm -hmm. is for us to remember and they say hey look if just a few remember it changes the world Fear, in its essence, in its kind of beginning, it was still made from love energy. So remind it of what it's made out of, and it has to shift in vibration. What does that mean, that fear was made of love energy? Well, so whether you want to call it divine oneness, creator, source, all that is, the great universe comes from the central sun and that's just another term for God and the angels they will they will use everything that they feel might be helpful we come from oneness and that oneness or the central sun which means the central soul the heart of oneness is love it's at the vibration of love so schoolroom earth is made of that energy We get to experience fear, but fear was still designed, created, pick your terminology, by creator, by the universal consciousness. I haven't used, you haven't used that term before, but. That's actually a term that I use. 
Okay, well, see, that's why they used it. <laughs> I used that as recently as last night on air. Well, that's why they used it then. So, Which to me is, is you, one or the number one, 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 one. That is, that's universal consciousness. That's who and what we are. And it's love. It's at the vibration of pure love where fear does not exist. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand all there is is one. So when the vibration of love touches the vibration of fear, even at its densest, you know, I don't like this word, but most evil, it transforms it. It lifts it. Would you say, going back to that word evil, and I'm trying to bring light to the quote unquote darkness, trying? No, there is no try. We are, we are yodaing up. We are doing. Is evil simply lost? Being, forgetting who and what we are, forgetting our connection, forgetting our oneness. Illusionary separation, same thing. Thank you can you. call it forgetting, but love works like a magic lasso. Mm. And when we understand that, we can use the power of love. And the angels love to work with the chakras and the colors because... Mm. They're trying to engage that inner child who loves to play and work with color. So we can actually have a magic Archangel Michael lasso that's a brilliant sapphire blue Ooh. and all the other colors of the rainbow and say, come on, fear. I lasso you back into love. And this is how it, it can sound impossible, but it's, it's the way the school was set up is that as consciousness rises in the human story, the external reality must change. And so that's why they say no need for panic. This is a purging. So fear comes to life. Fear comes into the movie. And they say another thing about human beings that makes their work a little bit challenging to help us mm -hmm. is that we love drama. And very often drama is you'll found it in fear. And they say fear is so entertaining. You love good guys and bad guys and good and evil. But the truth is, is that that's illusion. It's not real. Even though it looks real and it can feel real. For those of us who are willing mm -hmm. to use our highest vibrational will and just to say, okay, I choose love. I don't want anything to do with trauma that fear creates. That helps everything to change. But right now is a purging time. It's not the end. We're not going to hell in a handbasket. We're actually being lifted up far more like a hot air balloon, but not with, you know, fossil fuel lifting the balloon, with love <laughs> lifting the balloon. Thank you. We'll call it a free energy balloon. How about that? Perfect. I want to understand the makeup that is going on right now of what appears, it appears, it's an illusion, I understand, but it appears that power is being incredibly misused at this time. It appears that the earth is going through a sixth extinction at this time and is accelerating off the cliff with humanity at the wheel. It appears with war, with famine, with climate, that we're driving ourselves to the edge. And I want to hear from the angels some words of reassurance that this is both only an appearance and what we get to do at this point. Okay, let's bring them in. Thank you. We are the 12 archangels of the central sun sending you a flood of love. Let us help you to embrace what truly is. All the darkness exists. And for you, human beings, it is very real. But we want to help you to understand 
that it is real because of something we call the astral filter. Now, there is heaven. Heaven is the pure vibration of love. And there is earth, schoolroom earth, where you get to experience fear and everything that fear manifests because it's part of your education. But in between, when schoolroom earth was first created, there is the astral filter that absorbs all the negativity, everything that fear creates, because let us help you to remember every thought and feeling creates, it manifests, because you are like creator, you are like divine oneness, universal consciousness. And so all of those fearful thoughts and fearful feelings, well, we cannot allow you to destroy your school. So there is an astral filter, which we purge and clean for you regularly. But all of this, well, we call it nonsense, although we must acknowledge for you it is very real. So we're going to say good guys and bad guys. So the bad guys that are using fear to control you, not really, that are taking over the world, not really. They pull their power from the astral filter. So if they honestly believe that they are going to destroy the universe, only the illusionary universes that have been created in the astral filter. You have your own astral filter. It is called your deep subconscious. It is where fear and fear's limiting beliefs hide out. Limiting beliefs that tell you that you are powerless, that you are poor, that you are disconnected from source that you are unworthy, that you are guilty, that you should be ashamed of yourself, that punishment is imminent. All of this lives in your deep subconscious, but you can bring love there. And as you bring love there with your intention, you transform the astral filter. So the bad guys lose their power. They lose their influence. Because what they used to use is now rising up in vibration. It is becoming love. You do not need to be afraid that your school is being destroyed. But we do call you to action. If you are listening to us, surrender the will of your ego to the will of your soul, to your highest vibrational self. Choose love and deal with your own baggage. And we say this with love because to bring love where it is missing, love where it is missing within you, within your own limiting beliefs and feelings, to feel your feelings, to be creative, to listen to your intuition. It changes the global movie. And this is the fast way to do it. We thank you for listening. Everything is progressing. You are in a rapid stage of progression, not the end, not really even the middle, you are joyfully about to be in a brand new beginning, but it is up to you. How much drama do you want and need? Is the human collective ready to be like our angel Hana? Joyful, free, happy, trusting. We know that you can find your way, and we are here to help you. Thank you to the angels, and thank you, Belinda. So, 
we are <laughs> we're not humanity 1.0 but we seem to exist at this very low level neither good nor bad but certainly one where we get to ascend above where we learn from fear we learn from trauma we learn from drama in fact uh, uh i think you called it in the book and the 12 archangels called it the one human soul was that it the, they call it the one human body. The one human body, and I call it the human beingness, that we are all cells of the human beingness. And to me, the human beingness <laughs> is a walking, talking trauma. <laughs> That's where we're at. But look at this, Michael. Yes. If you think of the human collective and you think of the one human body, in, even in biology, where there are healthy cells those healthy cells can help yes. the cells that may have cancer. Uh, you know, when, when there's um, some kinds of cancer and very serious illness, you can be given stem cells from your own body, from your own bone marrow. So those of us that are willing, we can be like the healthy stem cells, the healthy bone marrow of the one human body and lift the entire being. And that's why we returned. So it's, it's one thing to refer to the one human body as, wow, it's in trouble. It's very attached to its addictions and its fear and its uh, video games and its cancers. But look at all of the healers and the star beings. And I mean, everyone's a star being, but the, the, Teachers that have returned to be a cell in the one human body right now to say enough of this fear game. It's a game, Michael. You know it's a game. And game's up. (laughs) And the game to me has resonance. It has frequency. It has yes. color, just like your brilliant color today. And I'm going, wow, I could have worn my Rue shirt, which would have matched you with a nice little halo of Rue on the top there. <laughs> but I love your color. And that's what we're talking about is being a tuning fork at a higher vibrational frequency. And that frequency goes out and it spreads and it spreads. And to use the <laughs> common nomenclature, uh, it spreads like wildfire over yes, this planet. It yes, it does. And not only that, but when those of us who have awareness transform those fearful thoughts and feel our feelings and live through the feminine brain, which means we allow our intuition to guide us, Mm -hmm. we allow our hearts to guide us, then that highest frequency of love, because we are walking it and talking it, talking our walk walking our talk. Yes. Both ways. I would agree with that. Then both ways. that powerful love, the angel said they already said this, so I'll be quick, but it goes out into the astral filter where the fear is trapped. So it's sort of like being in a smoky city, mm-hmm. right? And so it goes out into that smoke, into that density, and it transforms the smoke. So now there's fresh, clean air for all to breathe. That's how important it is for those who are aware or awake, pick your terminology, that you say, no, I choose love. No, thank you, fear. It doesn't, it doesn't help if we get confused or seduced by fears, old male, no female. Uh Uh-oh, we're in trouble, the end of the world. That's not what we came here to do. First off, does this appear to be, and and I I asked this recently of another guest, but it it bears asking again, is this appear, does this appear to be end game or end times where everything seems to be coming to a head to help us to almost use (laughs) that that fear, drama and trauma-based mind one last time? To help kick us out of this cycle of addiction of where humanity has been to help us shift. Let's see what they have to say. 
from our perspective, to be absolutely transparently honest, fear is not helpful. Because what fear does is it triggers in the human being, it triggers your brainstem and your amygdala to produce chemicals of fight or flight. And when you understand what's going on and you can calm down that anxiety, you help all concern. What we really want to say is that the drama trauma that is playing out on schoolroom earth, it is a cleansing, it is a purging, it is a lifting up of the old story of the past. You've been living in your past for far too long, not just with your energy, but with your stories, holding on to your painful memories and your suffering. Human beings, let the suffering go. Forgive even that which is unforgivable. We encourage you to use that energy in your crown chakra, that incredible, beautiful color that Michael is wearing, violet fire or violet energy. It is the vibration of love at forgiveness, meaning forgiveness is an energy. When you forgive what you don't remember, when you forgive even that which is unforgivable, when you forgive for others that you don't even know what you are forgiving, you are calling on a power. You are calling on the greatest alchemical power that is, and it's called forgiveness. So with the dramas and the traumas, and the painful suffering that you are witnessing, come home to your heart, to your intuitive truth, and say, I know what I can do. I can bathe schoolroom earth in violet energy of forgiveness. Through the one cell that I am, I connect with the one human body. And I forgive for all concerned. This raises the frequency so that, yes, the fear, it is purging. The old stories are purging. You're letting go of your past human beings. And most of you have been here sometimes thousands of times. And there's just things you haven't dealt with that must be lifted in frequency. Forgive it. Forgive it. It is not the end. It is lifting up the smoke so that you can really see. You can see that you are in school and you are ready to graduate to something far better. This is truly where you are. We do not speak in time because in heaven, the as above, there is only the now. So take action, but do it through your hearts. Do it through that highest vibration of love. Send forgiveness to where it is needed. And watch human beings that from your perspective are so dead asleep. Watch them wake up and change their story. You see, from our perspective, this is the highest vibrational solution. And we believe that this is what you all of you are doing, whether you know it or not, was that even those who are caught up, wrapped up in the biggest webs of fear and greed and power over others, you see they are waking up and they're going to turn in their weapons, you just watch. They're going to turn in their weapons and make 
new choices. It is happening. And this is the way Schoolroom Earth was designed to be in the beginning. The way it was designed to, we shall say, close its door, close its doors of learning through fear. You've done enough. All of divine oneness has learned what it needed to learn. What did it need to learn? That love is precious. That joy and happiness and freedom. It's just so wonderful. And ultimately, and you are at that place of ultimateness, humanity. You'll take, and all of divine oneness with you, love, grace, bliss, harmony, balance, jubilee over fear, over hatred and over greed. You are there. Celebrate where you are. It helps the rest of the one human body to wake up and go, where's the party? That's what I want. Mm-hmm. We were we were walking around dancing uh, before having you on the show. Um, we were playing "We Are the Champion" <laughs> with Hannah Bear because uh, we all are the champions, and and it, and it really begets the question: Have you heard? And, and thank you to the twelve archangels, and thank you to you because this is, I. It looks like. Um, there's some energy draw when, when you're doing this in the best yes. way to put it, Belinda. So thank you. Have you heard what the, well, I guess I could use that word, what the next stage of the construct looks like? What the next uh, piece of the party looks like? Humanity 2.0, shall we say? What I just asked them, so this is going to be from Belinda and then we can we can bring them in. But what they say is that there's going to be the bad guys mm-hmm. are going to show up very unexpected and say, I want to be a hero. I, I want to serve the singing light of universal consciousness now. Their hearts are opening and that we are going to be very surprised. And it doesn't have to be a lot of these individuals. It's that they're representatives. Mm -hmm. They are like cells in the heart of the one human body. They're cells in the in the liver, in the intestines of the one human body that are it's all been planned from their perspective, souls have incarnated and uh, created egos, just like in a movie, to play the bad guy. And then the bad guy goes, ah, I'm bored. I'm, I want to try being a good guy. That's how the angels have explained it to me. So would you like me to bring them in and have them? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, we must say we appreciate Belinda's explanation of what we have shared with her. We have to come to encouraging each of you to be the hero. You see within you, and this is in our new book, Angel Abundance, we have a whole section on lifting humanity out of suffering. Within you, there is an angry young masculine. And this angry young masculine, he's frustrated because he wants to have power. He wants to be a hero. He wants to be acknowledged in the world. But when that doesn't happen, then he is total fodder, prey of fierce old male 
saying, I'll give you power. I'll give you the power of fear. I'll teach you how to be in control and how to use greed. And so he becomes angrier and angrier and more and more frustrated. And because of the law, as above, so below, as within, so without, you see this angry young masculine all over your globe. He may not necessarily be young, and he may not always be in a male body, but he is violent. He is disconnected. He is discontented. And he can't have enough power. He can't have enough money. And he can't have enough destruction. And we encourage you to be the hero that you were born to be. Go within, because when you go within, you change the so without. So go within, find your angry young masculine. He's part of your wounded self. Shower him with some love and forgiveness, with some violet fire. In our, in our book, we say you can find him in your liver, but love him. Because guess what happens when you love him? He transforms into your divine masculine. Do you know what your divine masculine does? He gives words to your intuition. He tells you exactly what to do where to put your energy. He directs you, but he directs you with love. And he sets you free because he cannot exist without the divine feminine. Listen to us. We offer you a choice to be the hero that you came into this incarnation to be human being. You signed up to come at this moment. Go within, find that angry self, the one who is frustrated, feeling powerless. And so he gets pulled into the drama and the trauma and the fear and the hatred, and let him rise up and watch the change happen as those who have been manufacturing weapons of mass destruction open their hands and they open their hearts and they say, here you go. Oh, and let us show you how to transform all of these weapons into usable energy, into ways to free your earth of pollution. The young masculine, when he rises up, he's pure genius. You will see. You will see. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go from the divine masculine, the divine feminine, and a time where we turn our, uh, what is it, our guns into uh, plows. (laughs) There is a good way to put it. it. Um, What can you tell us about, if Hannah bears our example, the divine inner child? And what we get to do with our divine inner child. Because you just glow when I say that. And I just glow when I say that. And I can see Hannah very here when I say that. The divine inner child is symbolic for the heart. But we mean the, the heart that is the part of the human brain that resonates at the frequency of heaven. Mm-hmm. Where fear does not exist. And it's the heart chakra. But it's more than that. It is heaven within us. That is the divine inner child. And the angels use 
the it's it's a metaphor the divine inner child because children are open they're innocent they're connected they are so incredibly loving they get what love is when we just listen to that divine inner child we have access to that flow of intuitive truth at the highest frequency of love. And that's how you do your automatic writing. You may use different words. And that's how Belinda channels the 12 archangels. So the divine inner child also gives us something that the angels call heart power. And heart power is what some people call, but it would be at a bit of a lower frequency, the law of attraction. The angels say that that the law of attraction is very much three other divine laws, as above, so below, as within, so without, the law of one and the law of energy, which is very much about vibration. So heart power that the divine inner child gives us and works with all the time attracts to us whatever we need whatever our soul wants us to have and wants us to experience, that gives us happiness because it's at the frequency of pure love. That is Angel Hana. She's at the frequency of pure love. And that's your inner child and mine and everyone's. But you do need to connect and listen instead of tell. How do we... Beyond the listening, how do we, oh, I'm picturing a mermaid license plate yesterday because I always get images and it said faith on it. And I saw another one recently that said believe on it. How do we take that step into the knowingness that if I step off this, I'm putting everything in quotes today, cliff that the step will be there for me. I hear this is the way to go, but how do I step forward? What the angels say is baby steps. They say that human beings need to experience miracles, that it needs to become a way of life. So by connecting with your divine inner child, Mm -hmm. filling up, well, it's really just ask your soul, you surrender to your soul to take care of you. Our souls have created us. We are an expression of our souls. So simply by doing that, we're going to really raise our vibration. Heaven has no hell in it. It's very important to remember that. Thank you. Right? And heaven is a vibration. So as we continue to experience more heaven, more good things that happen to us, Sometimes we still have to be patient. Sometimes the, you know, the new home hasn't appeared yet or the new lover or the way forward doesn't mean that it's not coming. It means that we are actually being opened up by our souls to receive it. Things are being set up for us. Say a simple thing. I surrender the will of my ego to the joy of my soul. As we do that, we're going to begin to experience that things get a lot easier and happier. We're in far better moods. It's That's the proof. I've always believed that's why they had me become a scientist before I was drafted as a messenger. For I, the I, I didn't know that till this book, that you were a biologist and you're going, what in the world? <laughs> You didn't know that? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I have two masters in science and I was drafted by yeah. Gabriel doing a stem cell research, a sample. I was yeah. holding a sample. So And and I have one master's, the, one master's, only one master's in science and one master's in business. <laughs> well, but you know, we're connected. <laughs> what can we say? So you were so so go back. I, I'm I'm curious. Stem cell, Gabriel, what happened? You have not heard this story? No, I have not heard this story. 
Okay, very quickly. You got to go back over 30 years. I'm working in a pediatric research, uh, a university lab, and but it was a pediatric oncology uh, hematology lab, and I was holding a stem cell sample, mm -hmm. and I'm in a sterile hood, and all of a sudden I'm in a different place. Um, I'm in a stone room that's round, and there's a golden light that appears, and here is. Archangel Gabriel, huge. And the only way I recognize the angels because it came with a big trumpet. And the angel spoke to me telepathically and said, Belinda, your work is going to change. Humanity has forgotten that they're God's divine children. Yeah. We need you to help them to remember that. And I said, well, that sounds like I need a degree in psychology. I immediately started to argue with Gabriel. And... Uh, and it was incredible experience. And Gabriel said, well, you need to, you know, you need to learn what's in the book to your left. And it was a huge, huge book. It opened up and in red fire letters was the word love. And I said, OK, I can learn about love. And so then I was back in the lab uh, holding my sample. I looked at my watch because I thought I was gone for a day. I mean, I could feel the dirt under my feet and my feet were bare. And I'm like, where am I? <laughs> and not even a minute had gone by and my whole body was shaking. And I was like, what happened? So now I know what happened. My, uh, I, the angels call it the feminine brain mm -hmm. popped open. I had a brain snap and I was over there in a different um, place. And that's how it began. Wow, wow, wow. It's interesting, this number 30, the synchronicities. I was on a very different, I did not have the same experience, but I was on a very, very different path in life. When 30 years ago today, I was racing bicycles in Europe, I was hoping to make it to the Tour de France. I came into this little town called Hoville, high town. And there's a crowd going nuts around this, this blind turn. Vous allez, vous allez. Ooh. A safety official waved me through the turn into a beautiful, blessed oncoming car. A woman who had found her way down an alley and out onto the race course on a closed course. And that ended, in quotes, my career. And for nearly 10 years, I would have said, Belinda, God is dead. There is no God. PTSD and pain and blah, 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 all story. But apparently I learned through drama and trauma at that time. But to this day, that was perhaps the most beautiful drama and trauma in my life to take me out of the well, we'll call it the young masculine grrr, <laughs> and to bring me to a different place. Well, and bicycles are symbolic for relationship. The angels say that, right, we create our own reality and everything in our external reality mm -hmm. is symbolic and that life itself has a language to it. And so you were on a bicycle. And so that's about a relationship. But you were very much in a relationship with your ego. Mm -hmm. And that relationship needed to change so that you would have a relationship with your soul, with your calling, and with God. And we're all so grateful that you surrendered maybe a little bit by force, but you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That brings us to a very important question. Because when we talk about freedom, we're talking about getting, coming back to our true power. And our true power is not our egoic power. What does it mean, you talk about in the book, to reclaim your highest vibrational will? Mm. Highest vibrational will is truth. Highest vibrational will is when you're living in your heart power, you're using your heart power, you are clear that love is your source. Mm -hmm. You don't have room for the old male, fierce old male and old female. And you've surrendered the will of your ego to the will of soul. And so the will of ego, many people say, oh, that's your free will. Why would you want to give that up? But 
the will of ego can seduce you right into fears, old male and old females, you know, camp or palace, depending on how you look at it. But the will of soul, your higher self, that's what really gives you freedom, because that's going to give you more of heaven and that higher vibration and truth so that you know what your truth is, Mm -hmm. so that you're not wasting your energy or your time. Highest vibrational will gives us freedom, increasing freedom. It almost seems too simple because I hear, I'm hearing here, I'm hearing here, I'm hearing here, and I get stuck sometimes because there's so many beautiful conversations going on. And then I hear just ask the question, what does surrender really mean and how simple is it? Let me let the 12 big guns, and and, and (laughs) for everyone, that's Belinda's nickname for the 12 archangels. And what an interesting term it is. They say gun is symbolic of fear, right? Mm-hmm. It's a it's a physical symbol of fear, clearly. Yeah. And so, you know, this is, again, going way back to when I first met them. I don't remember if I gave them the nickname or they gave me the nickname of the 12 big guns. But what it means is that their purpose, working through all of us who are willing, and they work with every healer and spiritual podcaster, you know, they that's they guide all of us is to transform fear and so that's why they're the 12 big guns of love so i need to add the end of their title okay so i I feel like i'm gonna have a title for this show messages from the big guns of love (laughs) there you go yeah okay so let's And we also expand in number as needed. We continue to expand and grow so that every human child, no matter your age, you have 12 guardian angels with you. Every human child has an Archangel Michael of highest will an Archangel Raphael of purest love, loving heart, an Archangel Gabriel, so that your voice speaks the truth. We are all here, loving you all the time. Surrender is simply words. When you take your conscious mind, that's your ego. It lives in the masculine part of your brain. When you take that ego, which we've shared before, it's the size of a green garden pea in your brain. Your brain is bigger than a watermelon. We speak in symbolically, but that's how big your ego is. And so the green garden pea, which thinks it's in control of everything and everyone, when it voices, whether inside your own head or you do it out loud, these words, I surrender. That means I hand over control, which is made of fear. So it turns to dust. To my soul, your soul needs to be in charge, to be the director, to be the leader of your life. By simply saying, I surrender. I don't want to be responsible all the time. I don't want to be miserable. And I don't really want to have all this control and predicting the future. That's what ego likes to do is predict the future. Ego wants to be in control. Tell me what is my future. When you say the words, I surrender. I surrender to the will of my soul, to the care of my soul. 
the protection of my soul, the love of my soul, then life gets better. Because the pressure that that poor little garden pea feels, it goes away. Now there are loving, truly loving parents. This is your soul guiding you, saying, let us take you by your little hands, ego, and walk you into paradise. Surrender is a command. We've infused in the word in every language on schoolroom earth. We've infused it with love so that when you say, I surrender to the care of my soul, life changes for the better. And it does so immediately. Test us on this. We love to be tested human beings. Enjoy. Thank you. So they were talking about testing. They were talking about surrender. I want to play with the flip side of the coin for a minute, which is, is there, we look at the world around us. We're learning even more about how it's love. And my guess is that we get to be big or little guns of love, (laughs) bigger little guns of love and forgiveness everywhere we can. Is there also action that we do on the outside or is it all as within, so without? What they say is in their very, um, I'm going to call them stubborn about this actually, is that, We're far more efficient Mm -hmm. if we transform within Mm -hmm. instead of getting riled up emotionally and taking action. We can do both, but they say, start from the inside. If you don't transform on the inside, no matter what you do on the outside, it's just not going to work. Hi, Angel Hana. Yeah, no, she came over by herself. This was not uh, um, planned or premeditated, although Mm -hmm. I had a suspicion that she would understand that there would be a time, I know, (laughs) for coming back on air. I know. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to share, Hannah Bear? Thank you for coming here. We need you on School Room Earth. Yes. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's working. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Move that. Move that vibration, right? Lift it up with love. (laughs) It's interesting that we're talking about action. And she came over here. And I think she's expressing pure joy and love right now which is maybe the ultimate action we get to do. And that's, that that's what they're saying, is to let the love flow into us where it's been missing, to transform those old beliefs and fears, right? So that we can be truly divine, right? And then we know what action to take, Michael. Mm-hmm. Then our then our divine feminine, our intuition and divine masculine, they tell us where to put our energy out into the world. So it's about, you know, having the horse before the cart when we know where to put our power. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> she's come into this world at an interesting time. Put that in quotes again. Where all systems, whoa, whoa, the keys, the keys. <laughs> I know, appear to be doing funny things. It appears that the world is doing funny things right now. And we want to get, ooh, we want to say, for instance, uh, do you bring more kids into the world at this time? Do you, what do you do out of, this is the breaking of the old. What do you do out of love for your kids and for everyone at this time? Well, Michael, Angel Hannah picked you and Jessica. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm coming in. And I'm coming in in my way. And I'm coming in now. And that's what souls do. So the parents can think that they are in control, right? That's what the ego say. Yeah. But it's truly up to the soul. And there are very super powerful souls coming in at this time and have been for a while. That's why, you know, Michael Sandler has had, I forget how many, eight, 13 year death experiences. <laughs> I lose track. It's all good. We've had enough. We're done. <laughs> Cancel clear release. Yes. yes. <laughs> but, you know, powerful souls come in and they create egos that are going to be willing, egos that are going to surrender to the powerful soul to help facilitate the change. And Angel Hannes. Clearly one of them. Yeah, to turn things around. <laughs> turn things around. Yes. Are you having fun there? <laughs> I don't know what people are going to say about having an upside down baby. Woo! On the mic. How do we even, how did you do this? <laughs> She is so happy. Oh, yeah. Well, now she's so dizzy. Yeah, she's like touching her ear. Oh my goodness, I'm a human being. <laughs> All right, Hannah Bear, we're gonna have just a few more questions. And oh, what the? <laughs> yeah, she's having a good time. Yes. She's telling us what we all get to wow do in this yeah. lifetime. All right, I'm just going to scan through my questions here and see if there's anything else we should ask. Well, while 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 she's doing this, um, where could people go, Belinda, to find out more, to find your work, and to find the angels' beautiful work? <laughs> You're just wanting to be upside down. How do we? Well, she's she's flying. She's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. So anyone who is interested in uh, finding Belinda Womack, you just come to BelindaWomack.com and that will take you to the Angels School of Spiritual Evolution where all their courses are and um, links to their books you can also find on all the bookstores and Amazon and things like that. But pretty simple. Just my name, BelindaWomack.com. We'll take you where you need to go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think we definitely get to do a meditation for a in a minute. I think Hannah Bear may have had enough or just needs to be upside down. I'm trying to discern here. What do you think? Are you good? Well, she wants, she's looking for her mommy. Yeah. Mommy is... Whoa, no, she wants to. <laughs> She's taking over, Belinda. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she may do that. <laughs> all right. So are you all right if we continue with one or two more questions? What do you think? <laughs> or is there something you wish to share with people? Right, play. She says play and choose love and trust. Yeah, because that builds faith. She's got very good faith muscles. 
You do. You're a muscle baby. All right, should we have you go back to Mama Bear? <laughs> you may want to move your mic. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> your daughter did a little bit of an adjustment. And she will do that again and again and mm -hmm. again. Um, she's definitely the strongest. I don't even know how to describe how strong she is. Not rebellious, different, although her favorite shirt says, uh, cutest little rebel in the galaxy. <laughs> but she came, I believe, how, well, I think if we own it, and certainly the kids own it, we all came here today to, I want to use the term wrecking ball, but that's a strange one, T to let go of the old. Definitely. We have to make room for it. That's why the angels are always saying, bring love into that deep subconscious, all those caverns where you've been soaking up all of the fear and your ancestors' fear and their trauma and their, you know, their stories of hardship and their stories of lack. Bring love in and forgive it. And then it gets transformed and there's space. And that automatically clears the astral where some people are finding their power, right? And so as we do that, we shift it for all concern. We're basically space makers. We're making space for love. Thank you. So I know where I want to go with the last question or two, then we'll do a meditation. Let's talk about, and, and, and I've never heard her describe this way, Archangel Gaia, what's going on with the earth these days and and how I, I put a list from your book it's brilliant tornadoes hurricanes snowstorms four hours fires rain fog flooding droughts and global warming how all of this is actually helping us to make space oh this part of the book always just makes me just want to cry with joy so archangel gaia one of her manifestations is schoolroom earth. She is the earth. And she's also one of the 12 archangels and they make it very clear, we, you know, we're a team, we're, we're gonna hold each other together. And so what she says is that we human beings have been tricked by master fear master fear that being a teacher, that's why the word master, into becoming far more masculine, far more controlling, not going into our intuition or being creative, which is they just say is feminine, the angels. And so a part of that is we've disconnected from our feelings mm -hmm. and our emotions. And right, emotion is energy in motion. And that her job of being our mother, because she is the mother for all of us, is to mirror back to us what we are feeling and what we are thinking that needs to be transformed instead of just ignoring it and thinking it will go away. It doesn't. So forest fires are the rage of the one human body and floods are the flooding emotions, especially sorrow of the one human body. And air pollution is our negative thoughts. So if we as individuals will pay attention to what we feel mm -hmm. and transform those feelings, honor those feelings as sacred, then we help Mother Earth so she doesn't have to mirror all of this back to us. And the angels say in their book that global warming is, you know, it's a reflection of greed and that we've been taking from Mother Earth. They don't judge us for anything. They say it's part of being in school, but we've been taking from Mother Earth because, you know, we basically, we steal from our own feminine and we neglect 
we neglect ourselves, we ignore ourselves. Very often we're just in a male driven do, 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 work, work, work world. And we can change this. And Gaia, Archangel Gaia is definitely uh, not going to go to hell in a handbasket or through atomic weapons or anything like that. She's far more powerful. And, and the angels also say that, and I just learned this, Michael, they taught me this yesterday, yeah. that, because uh, I'm always learning, that schoolroom earth is illusionary. It doesn't mean it doesn't feel totally real to us, but the true earth, the true Gaia is absolutely pristine. And the mission is for the two to merge, right? The illusionary Gaia to be healed and filled with love and transformed. And she can be. The science exists to transform her now. And so then they become they become one. But she has no interest in being destroyed. But she will mirror to us how we destroy ourselves and how we neglect ourselves. Our feelings are incredibly important to us as human beings and to all of divine oneness. Because when we don't feel and that emotion gets locked up, especially lower vibration emotion like rage and sorrow, then we become powerless. We, we, we can't move. Our energy gets completely stuck and it makes us physically ill. It's what causes inflammation. They're telling me that I need to stop because I could just keep on going. So there. <laughs> Last, I'm not sure if I said two questions. Please forgive me if I did. Last two questions. This, the first one, I believe, will be a question for the archangels if we can. Okay. And I can't believe we're going to go there, but I, I muscle test. And I've been going, do I go there? Do I not go there? Do I go there? And I, I hear yes. Um, we've had a lot of shows on recently about um, free energy and devices that have been around for a long time that we haven't been given access to. And about extraterrestrial civilizations coming here in peace, but now humanity is kind of reaching an interesting turning point with the technology that those in power have. And I'm wondering if we can ask the 12 archangels of the central sun what they have to say about ETs, about free energy, about any and all of this at this time. So, Michael... They're so laughing. They're laughing. They're laughing and they're twirling and they're moving free energy. We are the 12 archangels loving you. We say that your energy has always been free. Are there inventions? Of course. You have never had to pay for your energy, but it has been part of your learning, part of the story. So is it true that free energy exists? Of course. Are, are there devices that would end the use of fossil fuels? Of course. Are there technologies that would clean up every landfill on schoolroom earth? Well, yes, of course. All of this very much exists. And we tell you that those that have this technology, even if right now it's in the form of weapons, they know how to change it into tools that benefit all concern. They have the genius to do this. So invite them, embrace them, encourage them just through love, through loving your own inner masculine, through bringing love into the one human body through yourself. And they will come forth and they will say, not only will they say, they will do it. Let us show you, they will say. All this energy 
the devices. We keep hearing from your audience that it's the devices, it's the mechanisms to use free energy. Oh, yes, they exist. They're stockpiled. You have everything above and beyond what you need already exists. What you need to pray for, which just means to use your intention, is that the people that have these mechanisms, these tools, that they become generous. And this is a small move of the needle. It's not a big move. Remember, they want to be heroes. As far as ETs, we must remind all who listen to us that human beings are not born. They don't originate from their school. You have come from all over the great universe to come to this school. You line up to come to this school. Sometimes over and over and over again. So we must tell you that most of you, if not all of you at this point, are ETs in a human form, learning what it means to have a physical body that feels, that has a brain, that is both masculine and feminine so that you discover oneness. Do we call them star beings, your family? Do they visit regularly? Now, this is something that we feel that, well, we do not argue really with anything about this whole UFO thing, but we do tell you that most of your UFOs are human made because we don't need them. When we want to come to the earth, now most of the time you don't see us directly unless you live in your heart because we're at a different frequency, but we come all the time. Belinda can look out her dining room window and see beings from all over waving to her. Then we have a portal close to where she lives at Glacier National Park. We love to go there. And we are speaking of the we because of divine oneness. Star beings do not need spacecraft to come to Earth. We just come. And of course, we share our technologies. And if we have ever come with a spacecraft, it was a booby trap to try to help you. Because you see, fear is encapsulated in your schoolroom. In your astral filter, it can appear that you make many, many, many universes and that you have the illusionary power that you can destroy the true universe, just like some believe that they can destroy the true earth, which is a lie. If you want to communicate with star beings. Go to your divine inner child in your heart and say, connect me, show me. I would love to make some friends today. The great universe is trying to help schoolroom earth to put an end to fear because fear is done with its job. It's over. You have chosen love. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't know that you see beings out your window. (laughs) Did they tell you that? (laughs) Well, this would have I been do, a whole different I show. <laughs> I, I, yes, I, almost everywhere. Even when I lived in Santa Fe, uh, I, I was out walking in a whole field of thunderbirds or um, the birdmen, 
there's sometimes bird ladies, but they were there holding and they, and they sing these beings. They come from all over different star systems and they just sing. They're helping to hold the frequency of earth, her heart, and to lift all the fear and they're fearless. They, they have no trouble. And I even said to my acupuncturist, you know, the angels told me, because we can sometimes get smoke from forest fires here, they told me that when there's smoke, that what's actually happening is a healing and a cleansing, that the, it's, a, it's a veil where the uh, beings of love mm-hmm. invite in the thought forms in the astral that want to do harm, and they hug them. And that's what's happening. And they come, they just call them. They call the astral, Mm -hmm. which looks like smoke. They call them out and they want to come and they embrace them. And then the smoke clears and they've done a lot of good work. So, and so when I said this to my acupuncturist, she said, you know, that's what the native Americans of this area say. They say that, oh, don't worry about the smoke. Smoke is a good thing. It means healing is happening. Beautiful. So on that note, last question before we go into a meditation here. What brings you, Belinda, what brings you the greatest hope right now? Hmm. What brings me the greatest hope is I feel it. I don't know how else to put it. Is I feel the love and the change my own life is very heavenly and I keep working on myself every day. I get very excited about transformation. Oh, goody, goody, look at what I found in my subconscious that I can help the one human body. That excites me like you wouldn't even believe. So I really feel that the love is, it's calling that fear to it. And I'm excited that fear has done its job. You know, I was told that as a kid, right? You probably were too. Then I forgot it for a long time. Forgot, came back, forgot, (laughs) came back, forgot. (laughs) But ascending, as we talked about with the 12, always spiraling upwards. That's what, that's what we do. And we take divine oneness with us. Mm -hmm. That's the, but the, the, Schoolroom Earth has, time is an illusion, but I'm going to have to use a time word. It's existed long enough Mm -hmm. that all of divine oneness has had its opportunity to journey through Schoolroom Earth in one way or another. So we're done. Mm -hmm. There's enough understanding, right? Understanding that love is what we Love's what gives us happiness. Let's be happy. Thank you. Would you mind leading us in a very short, whatever you feel, prayer, guided meditation, woohoo, anything? (laughs) Okay. Beloved ones, we thank you. We thank you for being willing to be our heroes. This comes from our hearts to your hearts. We need your help. And so we ask that you take a deep breath in. You breathe in love and you exhale fear. Before you is the purple door that takes you into heart. It's a beautiful emerald green meadow but it is nighttime and the stars are brilliant, but they are close. It is like you can reach up and touch any star that you desire to touch. But there is one special star that is blinking for you. You are with your divine inner child 
lift up the child just as Michael does with Hana. Lift up your divine inner child and allow her or him to reach the star that is calling to you. And this is home. Let it fill you with safety and security. The faith that you are immortal and you are all loving and all powerful. We ask that you say, I surrender the will of my ego to the will of my soul so that I may feel my true family calling to me from home. Home is divine oneness. All stars are one, one love, filling you, restoring you, giving you the courage that you need to lift the limbs that are sound asleep of the one human body. Lift them so that they can dance. We are always with you. Enjoy. I could just stay here right now. <laughs> okay, I've got a show to wrap up. However, <laughs> what beautiful energy, Belinda. This has been so beautiful, so uplifting, so powerful, so positive. So hanging upside down. -y. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see the comments coming now. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, surrender to your true soul, and get angel abundance today. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Speaking of lifting up the divine inner child, what a beautiful, empowering talk I just had with Belinda Womack. Oh, there goes the mouse. If you want to find out more about living from your true soul at a higher level, come join the School of Mystics. <laughs> I'm clicking. I know. I know. Oh, there goes the mouse again. <laughs> Click that link. <laughs> Click the link below. And if you simply want a daily attunement, visit dailywoohoo.com. Oh, cracker! Here's a link to the next amazing show. Yes, you can chew on it like a cracker as well. And that's a wrap. Shine, oh, the sun.